okay. The video messed up, so I got another camera and I'm still learning how to use it, so hopefully it works out okay and I'm having like an amazing amount of struggles today <laughs> trying to get this thing together. Someone doesn't want this word to go out, it sounds like. <laughs> but, uh, going to be Matthew 9 and Acts 1. This is the sermon we did at the church, and I recorded it, but the file just didn't even work, that old camcorder. So I've been, wanting, I've been looking at this camera for a while, something like a little bit upper standard, so I can do a lot more things with it, hopefully, and uh, have something um, better for ministry time and such. So... Um, yeah, we had the service just as usual, and I haven't been able to get alone um, long enough for the mode for actually trying to record the word. But the word consists of, of several thoughts. Um, one is that God is real, and that He's always there, and it's just a matter of um, where we are, where our heads are, and where our hearts are. And where, let's see, Matthew 9, it's what we're talking about. The, disciple, or the Pharisees coming to the, the, um, Jesus and the disciples saying, why don't you guys fast? And Jesus is saying, because I'm right here. I don't, you know, why would you fast if I'm already here? You know, you would have gone, then you could fast, you know, indicating that fasting is, an, is, a, is a way to talk to God. It's a way to get in touch with God. And then, of course, that led me to the ascension because he, he's no more here. He's not here anymore. So, several different thoughts that we'll be getting into. Um, mainly those, those are some of the bigger ones, but, uh, I wanted to open up with a thought about this movie I watched. It was called, uh, God's Not Dead. And, um, but, uh, another one was about something I've already said before in that voice number one video. It's about, um, I mentioned about the, uh, um, the communist guy. Um, remember that the missionary, the young man goes to the mission uh, as a missionary to study communism and go right to the he right to the source, and so he he goes to the place to learn about the thing, do his do his paper on on the subject, and uh, this man, the old man there was huge and scary, and he just sat there and listened to him dis describe to him like how communism is going to take over the church and wipe the church off the face of the earth by using the church's principles, using the biblical principles and, and using what we don't use and using it to annihilate us and uh, it's so scary to think that, that when he learned that 30 years ago or 40 years ago you think, well is it going to happen? And it's like, well it did happen, you know it's happening right now, it's like we are being slaughtered like pigs uh, as Christians because of this communist manifesto that's been going on and they said this guy said here's my story I went to the church to see what they're all about to see if we're gonna be able to take them to be able to wipe them out and you watch the Sunday service and you watch that man preach and everybody was in there just listening and you could feel the thunder in the place you know and he was just like oh my goodness we'll never be able to wipe these guys off we'll never be able to get these guys they're gonna slaughter us like pigs they're gonna get us <laughs> but he heard him say something he said he heard the um, pastor say to the whole congregation, several hundred people, I want to see you here for we, on Wednesday night for prayer. And he goes on Wednesday night to see what happens on Wednesday, to see how powerful these people really are. And uh, he says he went to the door, the place was all dark, it was not normal. And he asked the custodian, where's the big meeting? And the guy says, what are you talking about? There's no big meeting. And he says, well, the pastor said to come on Wednesday night. He says, oh, the prayer meeting? It's over there in some certain room. And they went in there, and there was like 10 or 12 people. And he was just like, are you kidding me? And he told the guy, he's like, we're going to wipe you off the face of this earth because I realize now that no one listens. You guys are trained as Christians in America to be hearers only and not doers, to, to be all bark and no bite. You know, the songs that we sing today it seems like the louder they get and the more the more bigger the congregations get, the less that people actually are effective in the community. The less biblical they are, the less studied full they are in the word, the less evangelical they are, the less protesting they do against false religion. It's just so amazing. Like as far as we're getting, we're getting worse and worse. We're being slaughtered and we don't even know it, you know? It's like it's like uh I was trying to imagine, like think about the scariest movie that you could ever imagine. And uh And I could think of 
some pretty messed up stuff because I knew people who knew movies and they would tell you stuff about other movies and I'd just be like, man, and I've seen enough messed up movies when I was young to know that movies can be pretty atrocious. And so, when you find out what's really going on, when you find out that powers are tapping into um, principles of how to organize, get really super organized, and be able to wipe out even the Christians who are trying their hardest to see God. Totally 100% sincere, and just slowly inching their morals down where God is speaking less, and these people are slowly starting to arm wrestle this over. The subtleness of Satan starts to push us down, and all of a sudden they're making plans that if the Bible is true, which we know it is, it's all going to come true, and if it does, it is literally going to be the scariest movie that's ever hit the face of the planet. It's going to be the horror of horrors. And we are living in the middle of it. And the creepiest thing about it all is that we don't even know it. Okay? So this communist is saying, we're going to nail you guys. You guys aren't even paying attention. You guys are like conditioned. American Christians, you guys are conditioned to hear all these strong talks and have like an ego without any payment. You guys have this, they, oh, we're so powerful because my preacher really preached us up. But it didn't cause any life change. It didn't cause any alterations in their prayer life. It didn't cause any alterations in anything. So it's like, it's like to know that we are, we are losing the war. The Christians are losing the war. As prophesied, you know, the Bible says that many are going to scatter away. They're going to run to false doctrines and false things like this. And it leads me to my other thought. I was watching this movie called God's Not Dead. It's a, a year old film. I guess it was in the theaters. And I really liked it. I cried like crazy through it. It's a very, very emotionally triggering film. And it's got so much together. And the story is just incredible. They lined it up amazingly. They did a really, really, really good job on the film. I mean, they really you can really feel, I mean, the film. Okay? The only problem is, is I'm just like going, Lord... It's like, there's something that I don't see in the film. It's really, 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 really hard. Because when you watch it, you're like, if anybody ever said anything bad about that film, they'd be crazy. Well, I'm saying something about the film to say that I really felt like this film was a strong delusion. I was like, this film, I mean, it was like, it was addressing, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, the guy, I mean they took some very serious stances and things like this. But it was just like, something about it was just so, something I couldn't quite put a finger on it. I was like, Lord, what is going on here? It's like, I can't, I can't figure out why it's not right. I just couldn't figure it out. I mean, other than the big giant shows and all that stuff. But they made it all make sense. It all seemed so right. But when I watched it, I just said, I just don't, I just don't sense that, that thing that I just know. I'm like, no, that's God. You know, when I didn't feel that, okay? But I did feel something really interesting where I thought the old lady, this lady's got dementia. She's got like, I mean, her brain is just like, like she just looks like she can't think. If you ever dealt with really, really old people, you know that they're not there all the time. I mean, they're there, but they're not there. Their mind is just like, I mean, they're just staring into space like they really aren't there. She could eat chicken all over and she just thought that was the last time. She's like, I ain't had chicken forever. But she eats it like lunch, breakfast, and dinner, you know? Because she doesn't remember anything. She's just like gone, you know. And so what was so powerful about the, what the, the most powerful thing about it was the part where it was really getting down to the, to the, the prideful. To, they took a very a kind of an a extreme prideful person, business tycoon. And it was his, his sis, his, this guy's sister. And it was, you know, this old lady was their mom. And she's like, would you please go see mom? She, yeah, you know, she's getting older and whatever. And he's like, I don't want to see her. He's like, if she can answer any questions or if she can answer a question, I'll go see her. So much stuff goes on in this movie. I mean, it's hard to get into all of it just to make one point. But he finally goes to see her at the end of the film after so much has already transpired. He's sitting there staring at her and she's staring off into space as if she doesn't even realize he's sitting there. And it reminded me of when I used to work for a, a realtor in Utah. I worked for a really, um, she actually used, she was in magazines and stuff. She was, you know, really, really, really a successful, powerful realtor in Utah for a while. And uh, 
she got hurt really bad from MS. And um, after she was going through a lot of treatment for MS and stuff like that, she had narcolepsy. And so when you hang out with her, she looks like she's just always falling asleep and she looks like she's just out of it. And so sometimes I'm like kind of clowning around with her and tease, picking on her and teasing her. And one time she kind of like, even though she was still drowsy and stuff, she says, Robbie, I can hear everything you're saying. Please don't think just because I look tired and I don't feel right that I don't know what's going on. I do know what's going on, you know. And that's kind of what I thought at first when I was watching this old lady because she's just sitting there staring. And the guy's saying to her, he's like, Mom, I've known you. You're the nicest person in the world. The nicest person I've ever met. You do everything right, and now you've got dementia. Nothing's, nothing ever goes right for you, and you always do all, you always do good. You're the nicest person ever. He says, I'm the meanest person, and I don't do anything right, and my life is perfect. And he says, explain that to me. And it was almost like she just kind of says, yeah, I can hear you. And she says, the devil doesn't let, she, the devil doesn't want people to feel, she says, the devil sometimes allows people to go through life with nothing stopping them at all. To hide the fact that they are in a cage. And, uh, he's, and she says, he de the devil doesn't want them to know what's going on. He doesn't want them to know that time is running out. But the cage door is open. And Jesus is opening the door for them to get out anytime they want to. And time just keeps on going by and one day the cage will be slammed shut. And it'll be too late. And then he just like looks at his... And then oh, what happened after that? That's when I thought. I was like, whoa, she was listening. But then all of a sudden she does something amazing. She goes, what did you say your name was? And then his eyes just went like, oh. He was like scared. He went from like king of the world to scared. You know, when something really real of God happens and he just got, whoa. Because he realized God just prophesied through this girl that can't even think. He just made her turn on and brought some heavy, holy wisdom to just shake this guy to his core. And it reminded me of a story that happened to me when I was 18 years old. When I was living in uh, Spokane, Washington, my parents moved to Hawaii and I was with a family. They went to this Bible church and they were a really, really nice family. Very godly, very Bible-y. Um, kind of more of that conservative Baptist kind of a vibe, you know. And they're the kind of people who don't ever talk about spiritual things. Ever. I mean, they talk nice about Bible, really polite, really gentle family, nice little, you know, little blonde kid. It was an eight-year-old son that they had, and another one that was like, you know, I think this one was seven or eight, and one was like six or something like that, and the baby girl. And she pulls me aside one day, and she says, you know what happens? Every, every, every few months, something happens to the older son. And we think because he's really evangelistic, he actually tells people that there is a hell, and that if they don't get right with Jesus, that they're going to go to hell. And so he's already led one kid to the Lord. And so they think because of that that the devil attacks him and they don't know how and why. But he, they would every few months it happens where he would just be like screaming and, and twisting and, and crying and acting crazy like he's in torment. And he was in torment of the devil. The, torment, the devil would start to beat him up in the spirit. He'd just be like, ah, 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 like this, just going crazy. And then they'd wake up out of bed and they'd go and calm him down and pray with him and to speak to him and, you know, and just talk about the Bible and, and sing songs or whatever they can for hours until it would calm him down. And every few months that happened to him, and he'd just wake up and go through his routine, uh, uh, and they'd calm him down again. And then when I was there, it happened again. And so they go in there, they calm him down, they sing and they pray with him and everything, calm him back down, make it all good. And they're like, man, this is crazy. And then the next night it happened, and she says, it's never happened twice in a row. So in a sense, like she was like, she was ready this time. She was like more like, okay, that does it. And she walked in there. She opens up the door and sees her son just going crazy like this. And she says, Satan, you leave my son alone right now in the name of Jesus. And he sits up in his bed and says, what are you doing in my room, mom? And it's just like, whoa. You knew that something was up. You know, it was like something was going on that was in the beyond. It was like, okay. You know, and I just, I really believe that it's so easy to lose sight of the reality of what's going on. You know, we, we, we are, 
trained to bark and have no very little bite in uh I guess like in some countries they have uh I guess it's like Hawaii or something like that before some of the civilization parts of it got established or whatever. Some of these areas where there's volcanoes and whatnot where they got vol volcanic activity which can, can create um, geothermal, uh, geothermal uh, power or something like that. I think that's the word it was. And then they've got all kinds of wind. The trees are just... That they could generate from there. They've got sunshine like crazy, so they could generate solar power. And they've got, I mean, so much different ways of, and, you know, rivers and things like this that they could generate so much different forms of generating power. And they and they started to do that, and they just they just didn't realize it, you know. And it's the same as people. We don't really, as believers, I think we miss a lot of the times how much power we could have in our life if we would learn how to tap into where the power is, you know. It's like the power is not in us. God is the power, and this is where the power is at, right here. Amen. So, I want to look at something real quick. Get back to the Word, and see if we can't learn something. It's Matthew nine fourteen here. Nine fourteen. Matthew nine fourteen. Then came to him the disciples of John. Let's pray real quick. Heavenly Father, we love you so much, God, and. Uh, this is for all the brothers and sisters that really feel like they don't want to live a life that is not substantially in your presence and in your will. And I, I want to stand together with all the believers that don't want to live a mediocre life, that we don't want to live a life that is missing out on anything from not being able to learn how to keep our minds and our, our whole beings engaged into you and to be ready to listen to what you have to say. So Lord, please bless this word. Please bless your name in this word. Please help um, all of us to always exalt you and to know that all ministry comes from you and that we need you bad and we love you and I pray that you would restore everybody to a strong, eternal view today. That we may know who you were on earth, and that you are still the same Jesus in heaven, sitting at the right hand of God. I pray that you bless the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Then came him to the disciples of John, saying, Why do we... Why do we and the Pharisees fast oft, but the, thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast. No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment and, is, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perisheth. But they put new wine into the new bottles and both are preserved. Okay, so we're talking about Jesus is here, so why bother fasting? while he's here. You know, it's giving us a secret of how we can start to tap into the strength of the war. How we can um, get into the word of God and have it not be of none effect, but have it be of, uh, of, of great effect. And that's what our goal is, is to be able to be very effective for God in, the what, in what he actually does want, you know. There's so many people with all kinds of great ideas, but it doesn't mean it's necessarily really what he wants for our life. They that are led by the Spirit of God is where their real strength is. Those that will really consecrate their life to God in such a way that God can't help but just give them sight and vision. You know, it's like, I wish that I could have all my thoughts recorded, you know, when the Lord is really starting to unfold things. Because it's like, things go through my head that I just go, God, please let that come off on the, on the, on the recordings. Please let that come off. Because it's like I'm just rolling and sometimes the Spirit of God just starts to go so strong and it just unfolds so powerfully. And so, 
It doesn't always do that when I'm recording. And a lot of people who is, who operate in more of a prophetic type of style of ministry, they understand how you can go through the Word of God and you're like, what did that mean? When it comes time to preaching, you're like, no. You know, it was like I was talking about all this stuff all day that day beforehand. And it was just like rattling. Boom. It was just so powerful. And I'm like, man, you know. And it's like, I just think that that must be what it is. It's just being right there in the right moment. You never know when the flow is going to happen. And that's all I try to do. I try to bring that to the house church. And it's it always feels like it's not right. But then I go back and watch it. And I'm like, how did that seem right now? <laughs> it's like something about the videos is, is worth something some, somehow to a, uh, to a select few people that need a specific um, angle of ministry. And it's like a... <laughs> It's an amazing thing. I don't know how else to describe it. But I'm just like watching this text here. And Jesus is here. And he says that fasting is what it is. When I'm gone, you'll fast. Why? Because you're going to still need me. You know, and this is like one of the tickets to finding out how we can find God. You know, and it's a huge risk. You know, not eating for a day is so hard. Not eating for two days or something. Or 40 days like Jesus did. It's really, really hard. And I believe that I believe that's going to be a, a big part of where we can take this to see if we can seek the Lord better. But to stay gathered around God, godly people, to stay hungry for being around very spiritual, strength, strong people, and do what we can do. Go where you know you're going to be alive strongest you know like I've been doing a house church by myself. I haven't had no churches in my life at all but now I'm going to be doing ministry at another church and it feels it feels like it feels so easy I'm like wow I forgot how easy life can be when you're not the one leading it's like so much pressure relieved just having them there it's like I'm not even I, I mean I guess I go to the church now because I I'm gonna I'm gonna be there all the time but it's like so weird to think like whoa you know and I can let the other guys do the the government work <laughs> it's like whoa okay you know and let the other guy, the other leaders, let them do some of the governmental work of the whole church, and all I have to do is just the music. And boy, that's, that sounds like easy. It sounds like well, that's like a, it's like a vacation for the rest of my life now. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, whatever. I want to stick to this text right here, to think about Jesus. He's right there, and they don't want to. He does. They don't need to fast because he's right there. But when he's gone, then we start to fast, and I think that. As we're fasting and seeking God and going where we're supposed to be, I think it's going to keep us on track.